This idea of proaction is this idea of being in time with tension. And it all starts with who you're being before you even move. Do I feel relaxed and calm through my whole body? The way you get calm is by feeling your whole body and relaxing through the legs, through the stomach. So when I look at her, is my primary focus on her or is it on me? My primary focus is on me and how I feel in relation to her. Like, how do I, do I feel my whole body, my legs, my, my, my turn on, my heart, my connection as I look at her. And then I can play with, because I can feel my whole body, the increasing and the decreasing of tension, which is gonna cause a reaction in her. In this video, we're going to cover action and reaction in tension, something we call being proactive. And of course, today we have the beautiful Anna Maria. She's back with us today. And as I said before, she's going to be in a lot more videos uh, in the future. So we're going to be doing some more stuff with her and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll let you know all about that as time, as time goes on. We look at in the world and the way we look at it in Fearless is that um, in the world, you have people that are reactive and people that are proactive. And people that are reactive tend to be running from tension. And we're gonna get a little more into that in, in, the, in the next video. They're trying to get away from something. But what we really wanna look at in this video is proaction or uh, this idea of creating conscious tension in the moment to cause a reaction in the world. A lot of people are saying, my life's not going anywhere, but they're not doing anything. They're not creating any tension. And uh, they're not being tension in a sense, because tension is what causes the reaction. Now, tension is everywhere, right? We've got tension from gravity. That's the basis of everything. We can't get away from tension. If we took the tension off your body, your body would ultimately atrophy and die. Um, so this idea of proaction is, uh, is this idea of being in time with tension. And it all starts with who you're being before you even move. Do I feel relaxed and calm through my whole body? The way you get calm is by feeling your whole body and relaxing through the legs, through the stomach. So when I look at her, is my primary focus on her or is it on me? My primary focus is on me and how I feel in relation to her. Like, how do I do I feel my whole body, my legs, my my, my turn on, my heart, my connection as I look at her and then I can play with, because I can feel my whole body, the, the increasing and the decreasing of tension, which is gonna cause a reaction in her. In life, a lot of you aren't getting what you want because you're not creating enough reaction in the world or you're creating a nervous reaction in the world. So if I'm not relaxed in my body and I'm all up in my head and I lock up and I put, <laughs> see, she's already reacting differently just as I go up a little bit. And that was a small amount of me. Now, Anna Maria is pretty highly tuned. She feels it really fast. But imagine I was up there doing that for five minutes with her, 10 minutes, how would she feel? She would have to, what? She would be very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, very. it happens very quick. Imagine we're not in a dating situation. Like uh, like if I walk up to her in a bar or on, the, or on the street and said, hi, she can just excuse herself and move on. It's like, okay, this guy's a little up in his head. He's a little weird. He's, he's gonna, she's gonna move on. But if I was, let's say we're in a business situation and I come up like that and we're talking business, what do you have to do? I have to bear with your presence and stay there, but um, I will make sure to find maybe another deal because I don't feel any security coming from you and my business may be in danger because of that. So um, I will potentially not have a second meeting with you. Okay, awesome. And if she was selling me and it was the opposite versus me selling her, then she would have to, as a sales rep or somebody that's consulting with me, you would have to build a little bit of a wall with mm -hmm. me and that's a lot of what goes on would you agree with that yeah and it's a lot of extra work and it's tiring uh, yeah yeah very much so. so this idea that i want to create a reaction in the world is really important but i also want to calibrate that reaction so for those of you that aren't creating any reaction at all that's a problem and for those of you that aren't calibrating the reaction that's a problem now it's okay to err on the side of maybe a little too much that's how you learn you see people because you're gonna you're gonna push too far and people are gonna react but then when you back off and readjust they're gonna appreciate it and they're gonna actually kind of you ever have somebody that uh that comes in and they that's too much tension too quick like they go up here and then they they realize they're doing it and they adjust because yeah. and then they but they don't get rid of the tension and run away like nice guys do they're like oh i did bad i'm gone <laughs> you know they literally readjust relax their bodies and how does that feel to you? They become instantly more pleasant and you, uh, it, to me, it raises a bit of curiosity. That's so who's that person now? I mean, now that he calmed down a little bit and became more solid, 
what's about that person, who is he, I, it really raises my interest. So it, think about this. If you screw up and you self-adjust, women get even more curious than if you never screwed up. And that's really awesome too. Yeah. Um, and that's really powerful to realize. So you don't have to be perfect. They like it when you take risks, but they also like it when you, they really like it when you learn from your risks. This is very important. Why is this so important? Well, uh, because uh, if we potentially would be dating or having a, being a couple, then you can uh, always adjust no matter what life throws at us as a couple. So right. that's always very nice to have. So it's a little reassurance. Yeah. So it's this idea that she can grow with you. So let's say you see two guys. One guy's pretty grounded, pretty solid. Mm -hmm. He's masculine, he's confident and he's, he's good at creating tension. But another guy's maybe he's a little more insecure and nervous, but the other guy adjusts quickly. He like learns from his mistakes quickly, mm -hmm. whereas the other guy just doesn't care. We do want to see that human kind of component, you know, in a person. The, the fact that he may be vulnerable, which is very, which is okay if he can adjust into it and he can present himself while being vulnerable, but adjust in time and uh, yeah. become better, improve, which yeah. is again, a sign that you want to grow. Well, out of those two guys, which guy would actually intrigue you more? Well, the second one, definitely. The one's adjusting. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So again, you don't have to be perfect or uber confident, but you have to be demonstrating that you're you're actually getting real and vulnerable with your mistakes. And that's actually gonna be more interesting possibly than the really confident guy. Because if the really confident guy is not learning from his mistakes, he's too cocky, she might pick the more real guy. Yeah. And, uh, and that's really, really powerful realization when you think about it. So this idea of creating a reaction in the world is essential for growing to the next level, whether you're doing sales, whether you're going looking for dates, uh, whatever you're doing. And the reaction starts from who you're being before you move. It's not like I'm sitting there going, okay, I gotta go out and I'm sitting in a coffee shop and I gotta go create reactions. I gotta go out, <laughs> I gotta go touch this person. I gotta go say hi to that person. That's how most guys think, right? Yeah, What's another way? Uh, like when you walk in the room and you see a guy, you ever see a guy that's just sitting there and he's kind of causing reactions in the room? What's he doing? What's he being like? What's what's his energy like? He fluctu fluctuates in his energy, which is always nice to, to have it like a wide spectrum. He has access to that. Whereas a person that's very still, he's like very constant and maybe way too high or way too low in his energy, which is kind of boring. You want to have the fluctuation between up and down maybe. So when you say still, what you, what's your definition of still? Because I think it's different than mine. Uh, to me, still means that he's uh, very constant in his energy. He doesn't, uh, he's just this constant flow that never changes, never goes lower or higher than that. And he's just being Can a guy be, linear. can a guy be still? In other words, not moving much, sitting at a coffee shop table, maybe at a couch at the coffee shop mm -hmm. and still causing reactions in the room. Yes, yes, and that's uh, caused by his uh, reaction to the environment and his uh, relation to the environment. So how does he do that? So what I'm saying before is that the guy, the, the guy who has this baseline mm -hmm. of, and when I say stillness, I'm saying it in a different way than you, but he has this baseline of stillness inside in the sense that he doesn't have to physically move mm -hmm. to cause reactions right away. That doesn't mean yeah. you don't physically move, you do. But the starting point is I'm, I'm in my body, I'm relaxed, I'm sitting there and and what is that guy like and versus the guy who's nervous like you see the other guy who's nervous he's in inward he's thinking what do I need to do and he's trying to figure out how to go create a reaction because all his, he's not creating any reactions because his energy is going inward on itself right yeah. so let me demonstrate this and then then you so if I look at you and I start worrying and I'm like I got to create a reaction in the room and I'm thinking about myself what do I'm going to do it's very very weird and uh yeah, it's not something that I personally want to have around. So if I'm sitting at a coffee table and I'm doing that and I got my drink and I'm thinking like that, what am I going to do to cause a reaction? What am I going to do to, to I got to talk to that girl. How do I get that girl? Look? And I start looking, hey, <laughs> and <laughs> how, how does it, you talk about how that feels? Uh, yeah, th th that's weird. I mean, why are you scared of, I mean, am I, oh, am I that scary to you or am I yeah. this? So what would the average woman do, do you think? If she sees a guy look like that, and he's, in, he's doing that thing, and he looks over, she's probably going to... Reject. Reject, look away. She's gonna, boop, eyes up, oh. And you're not gonna be causing, you're gonna be causing uh, either a negative reaction or no reaction in the room. The room's gonna just shut down on you. Now, the guy who's in stillness that's causing a reaction in the room has learned to enjoy the moment. So he's relaxed, he's calm, he's centered. 
and he's looking around the room and he sees people and he maybe nods to him or just gives him a little smile and then he goes back to reading his book or you know this is what pulls people in would can you talk about that yeah this feels more solid and more secure and uh, self-aware and surrounding uh, aware of the surroundings which is uh very nice he can play with everything that comes to him and uh deal with it in a very uh nice flowy way right yes and so his energy is going instead of the other one my energy was going inward this energy is going outward and being given it's not worried about i'm not sitting there worrying about do i look cool do girls like me do i have a booger on my nose am i in <laughs> my hair what am, uh I'm, I'm no i'm not like no instead i'm relaxing and enjoying the the, the endorphins in my body in a sense because i'm comfortable with myself and then I'm giving that away. And I'm, hey, how you doing? It's almost like a nod and a smile. How you doing? How you doing as people walk by? And you can feel that person, can't you? And it's very, uh, it gives a very nice feeling when, uh, when you're receiving that. Because it's very solid and very, uh, has a nice flow to it. And... Exactly. And how much does that have to do with the looks of the guy? Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Yeah, because you've seen, I'm sure you've seen really technically attractive guys that are inward and anxious mm -hmm. and really not so attractive guys that are outward and free. Yeah, and th actually that's what makes them attractive. The fact that they are willing to show up and uh, mm -hmm. share their energy with the world and not being reactive to the world, but just being in the flow with whatever it's, is happening around them. Yeah. And I see women that are really good at this too. I met a woman a while back who was just amazing, who, who did this exact thing to me. She was just sitting there and she, I walked through the room and. She just smiled, big smile, and she was talking. Two other guys were already talking to her, mm -hmm. and I was like, interesting. I wasn't personally that into her, and I was like, okay. But the more she kept in this inviting, open energy, the more I got curious about who she was. She literally pulled me in with her energy, and uh, and I think that was amazing. I was like, it was awesome. She was really top notch at the energy part, and it was really awesome to watch her do that. And so I remember. <laughs> I remember sitting there, and this reminds me of this, actually. I remember sitting here in Bucharest. This must have been four or five years ago. I'm reading Zan's book, Zan Perion's book. It's uh, Alabaster Girl, a great read. If you haven't read it, get a copy of it. And the book has a lot of this poetic writing about the dance of the masculine and feminine. And I remember really getting into this dance, and I could feel the push-pull in my body and the energy of my getting turned on as I'm reading more of it. And this, this flow, I consider this book a primer for this feeling. This is one of the best books to get this sense of what it feels like to just enjoy a beautiful woman. And then I would look up every once in a while and see the women coming in and out of Starbucks. And I can't tell you how many girls were smiling at me. I was like, interesting. Because I, I could feel it on me and they could feel it on me. And they'd mm -hmm. smile, and they'd look at me. And it was really cool. And that's why I call the book a primer. Don't read it analytically. Don't turn it into your five steps to whatever. Read the book and get used to the feeling of what that feels like to be a guy that is present. Now, this is what allows us to create a reaction as guys. This is what allows me to create a reaction to her because I'm coming from this nice baseline. And then I go out and create reactions in the world. This could also be in sales. This could be in any type of business, coaching people. So if I want to create a really good reaction with her, I got to have this starting baseline. Now, from this place, as I move, walk and talk, my beingness is getting straighter. So as I move, walk and talk, I can cause a reaction in her or in the world or in the, in the coffee shop that I'm in. So I could, look, I could nod to people as they walk by. I could walk by and make a quick comment. Oh, that's an interesting book. What are you reading? Uh, and they're gonna be really much more receptive, mm -hmm. right? Did you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add, for example, even if you're just listening to music, uh, depending on what the music makes you feel, you can reject people or draw your, the, the attention towards you because you, you're, you're feeling better, you're in, having a nice experience with the music, and that attracts people because you're sharing outside the energy that comes from the, from the music and the experience you're having. That was ex exactly one of my old techniques. I would have these songs that just made me feel really open mm -hmm. on my headset, and I would literally walk around and listen to those songs. When I got really open, I would take them off and I would socialize with people and talk with people. And if I started to go inward again for any reason, I put the headphones back on for a bit, reopen myself back up. And then when I was open, take them back off again. And I always had that music ready because uh, it works so fast. I was so anchored to it. It works so fast and so quickly. So uh, thank you for bringing that up. That was good. So this is other stuff I would do. And, uh, and so then now when you go to walk over and say hi to a girl, I want to cause a direct reaction now. You know, I just saw you sitting here and I wanted to say hi because you're open and you're in that being space, mm -hmm. the, the odds of her reacting 
really well go through the roof. And it's very nice to just have someone coming to say like compliment or just say hi to you. It's always, uh, I mean, to me, it brightens my day. Why not? Mm -hmm. And even if you're a little bit nervous, but if you uh, use your courage to drive through the nervousness and show up and say, hey, I just wanted to say you're beautiful. It's, it's very nice and uh, we women appreciate that. So let's, let's talk about the type of reaction it causes or pro if we, because the courage is a proactive um, form of approach. Whereas the non-courage is a reactive form of approach. So if I walk up to her and I'm, my energy is going inward and I'm nervous and I walk up and I'm like, hi, uh, I just want to say hi. You can feel the, the inward energy. You know, yeah. you're really pretty. Your eyes are really nice, but you can feel that inward energy. Whereas if I'm <laughs> nervous and, uh, and I get really nervous, I'm going to go in and then I punch through anyways. I'm like, hi, um, I'm sorry. I'm just really nervous. I had to come over and say hi to you. I saw you sitting there and you have beautiful eyes. And there's a sense, still a sense, would you feel the sense of nervousness yes. when I walked up? And then I'm punching, I'm forcing myself to show up anyways. And it's uh, something uh, to be appreciated, right? Because right. you uh, you own it. You own your the fact that you're nervous. Yes. And and I'm going to give you one more example. There was a friend of mine who went and said hi to a girl in, in Target. My girl, and he's really good with women. And the girl was sitting there on her cell phone and he walked up to her and he literally did that. He said, hi, I just wanted to say hi, you're really cute. And he, he realized halfway through his sentences, he was inward. He was in this inward energetic state. She's like, yeah, okay, thank you. She didn't even look up from her cell phone as she was texting. And then he, he caught himself and he goes, look at you. And he said it really loud, look at you, oh my God. And he goes, look, why my lip is shaking. I am so nervous right now talking to you because you're so beautiful, there's something about you. And then mm -hmm. she put the cell phone away and went, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it switched on a dime. So hopefully that illustrates the point I'm trying to make. And we're do doing our best to demonstrate this stuff here uh, to show you what's going on. But that's action reaction. Where are you causing, doing using a, using a proactive action to cause a reaction in the world? And then that reaction will compound with time. If you do it every day for a while and you get really good with not, because a lot of you guys, you're doing a lot of action, but it's from a reactive space, from a nervous inward space. And that's why you're not getting any results. Through these video series, we're gonna go a little deeper into why that is, that whole baseline and, and that type of stuff. But um, hopefully you guys found this video valuable. Did you wanna say anything else? Uh, no, I'm good. I think I shared everything that I had on the, on the subject. Awesome. It's a fun subject. Um, I love talking about it. Uh, if you've got any more questions about this topic, I would love to go deeper with it. This is something I love to explore because as we get subtler and subtler and subtler with it, you get more realizations, more understanding. So make sure to comment below and let me know specifically right now, do it right now, what you want to know about. And if you like the video, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You probably already watched a few videos. If you like it, you just go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification button because uh, I want you to get every video that's coming out. And I'm looking forward to reading your comments. With that said, remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video.